Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here my name is Josh and in today's video I'm going to be reviewing the BJ's One and BJ's One Plus credit cards. So I'll be going over the main features of both of the cards, their pros as well as their drawbacks. So hopefully by the end of this video you have a better idea of which credit card or if either of these credit cards would be a good fit for you. But before we go ahead and dive into the main features of both of these cards, if you wouldn't mind helping me out real quickly by just giving this video a like. That just helps out with the good old YouTube algorithm and also consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already. Plus, if you would like to receive up to $200 in free stock and a pinned comment below, why we'll be leaving a link to Robinhood. All you have to do is once you click on that link, it's just sign up for a free account and then simply link your bank account. You do not even have to make an opening deposit. At that point, Robinhood will be sending you one free stock worth all the way up to $200. Okay, so we're going to start out this video by going over both these credit cards and what exactly you would be eligible for. So basically, if you have the uh, BJ's One uh, Club membership, if you just have the regular club membership, you would only be eligible for the BJ's One MasterCard, whereas right now, if you had the Club Plus membership or if you plan to get the Club Plus membership, in that case, you would be eligible for the BJ's one plus MasterCard. Both these cards have no annual fee, so uh, no real difference there. So basically going over the different memberships with BJ's, we're gonna start out by going over those just in case you do not yet have a BJ's membership. Basically how they're similar is that with uh, both memberships, you will be able to get up to 25% off grocery store prices, uh, combining BJ's and mini manufacturers coupons for even more savings. You're also gonna be eligible for curbside pickup, same day delivery and shipping options are also going to be available. You're also gonna be uh, able to get the everyday low prices at BJ's Gas, one complimentary household membership, and then three supplemental memberships for only $30 per year each. Now where they differ is with the BJ's, uh, with the Club uh, Plus card membership, with that one you're gonna be able to get 2% back in rewards on most BJ's purchases. Then also you're gonna be getting five cents off per gallon at BJ's Gas. Plus you're gonna be getting two to three times back in rewards during special events. And then finally your rewards are never going to expire. Whereas with the Club card membership, your rewards in that case can expire. So at this point, we are gonna go ahead and dive into the main features. We're gonna be starting out with the BJ's One MasterCard. So with this card, you will be receiving 3% cash back in rewards on most purchases at BJ's. Then you're gonna be receiving 1.5% cash back in rewards on purchases everywhere else MasterCard is accepted. So you can use this card at other places than at just BJ's, so if you go to Walmart or if you fill up gas anywhere else other than BJ's, you can still use this card like you would any other card, but just keep in mind that with this card, you're only gonna be earning 1.5% cash back on all other transactions. Now on top of that, you're also gonna be receiving 10 cents off per gallon at BJ's Gas. Your rewards are never going to expire with this credit card. You can also redeem your rewards in club on BJ's.com or in the BJ's apps. You're not gonna have the ability uh, for cash back or on travel or anything like that. You're only going to be able to use your rewards at BJ's. And then finally with this card, there is no annual credit card fee, which means that you can continue to use it on a year to year basis. You don't have to consider whether or not you're getting enough rewards back with this card to make paying like an annual fee worth it because with this card, there is no annual fee. Now with the one plus credit card, you're gonna be getting 5% cash back in rewards on most purchases at BJ's. Compare that to just 3% cash back. So you're actually getting 2% more in cash back, which means $2 more for every $100 that you spend. You're also gonna be getting 2% cash back in rewards on purchases everywhere else MasterCard is accepted. So on all other transactions not at BJ's, you're gonna be getting 2% cash back with this card as opposed to just 1.5% cash back. So you're getting the extra benefit there. And then at BJ's Gas, you're gonna be getting 15 cents off per gallon. Compare that to 10 cents off per gallon with the regular card. With this one, your rewards also never expire either. And you can redeem your rewards in club on BJ's.com or in the BJ's app. 
And then finally with this car, there's also no annual fee. So it's obviously pretty beneficial as well. Now with both of these cards, unfortunately at this point in time, there is no spin bonus. That's probably one of the biggest drawbacks of both these cards. With other credit cards out there in the market, you might have to spend this say like $500 or $1,000 within the first three months. And in return, you're gonna receive a spin bonus of like $200 to $300. I really wish this credit card had some type of spin bonus, even a low amount of like $100 to $200. Unfortunately though, at this point in time, there is no spin bonus offered. So now that we went over the main features of both these cards at this point in time, we're gonna go ahead and dive into the APR and fees because of course this is also super important as well. Now, both of these cards have the same purchase APR, the same balance APR, and the same fees as well. So whenever I mention these, it's gonna be going for both of these cards. It doesn't matter whether you have the BJ's One MasterCard or the BJ's One Plus MasterCard, your purchase APR, balance transfer APR, and all your fees are going to be exactly the same. So we're gonna go ahead and dive right into the purchase APR. So starting out, your APR on purchases is either gonna be 20.24, 26.24 or 30.24% based on your credit worthiness. That's also going to be for balance transfers as well. Obviously, it's not going to be that worth it to perform a balance transfer with this card, considering that even if you do have another credit card right now where you're paying a lot of interest on a month to month basis, more than likely, you're not going to really come out that far ahead if you're going to have a balance transfer APR anyways of over 20%. Now later down the line, they might offer you a promotional APR of like 0%, which at that point in time, it could be worth it. But at least starting out, if you're gonna have an APR of anywhere between 20.24 to 30.24%, it's probably not going to be worth doing a balance transfer with this card. Then as far as cash advances go, on this channel, we usually recommend to stay far away from cash advances. This of course should not be considered financial advice, just my own personal reasons. Usually with them, you have a very high interest rate plus you have to pay a lot of fees as well. But if you do decide to take out a cash advance with this card, just know that your APR on them is going to be a whopping 32.24% plus a lot of fees like I just mentioned as well, which we are going to go ahead and dive into right now. So as far as those fees go, with the balance transfer, if you happen to do one later on the road, if perhaps they do offer you some type of 0% uh, APR or something for 12 to 18 months, and you decide to take advantage of that, you're still going to have to pay a fee. The fee on your balance transfer is going to be 3% of the amount of each transfer balance that posts to your account at a promotional APR that they offer you at some point in time. However, if you offer it at the higher interest rate, which probably isn't going to make that much sense, in that case, it is going to be none there's not gonna be a fee if you transferred at the regular APR, which again, probably isn't going to make that much sense. Then as far as cash advances go, if you decide to take out a cash advance with this card, despite paying a whopping 30 plus APR on your cash advance, you also have to pay a fee as well. The fee on your cash advances is either going to be $5 or 5% of the amount of each cash advance, whichever happens to be greater. Now with both these cards, once again, you don't have to pay an annual fee, so that's pretty beneficial. But then there are some other fees with this card, so that fee is going to be a late payment fee your late payment fee is only going to be up to $8. That's much lower than other card credit cards out there where the late payment fee can be up to $40. But still, I would recommend maybe setting up auto pay, marking your counters, do whatever you have to do. Make sure that you are paying on time. That way you don't have to pay that fee of $8 if you happen to pay late. So now that we went over the main features of both of these cards, as well as the APR and fees, at this point in time, we're gonna go ahead and go into what I would consider to be the biggest pros and drawbacks of these cards. So the biggest pro is the fact that you can earn anywhere between 10 to 15 cents off of BJ's gas in a time where gas uh, is very, very expensive. It's nice to get any savings you can and anywhere between 10 to 15 cents off your BJ's gas is obviously pretty beneficial. Then you're also gonna be getting three to 5% cash back on your BJ's transaction. So you can really rack up that cash back if you spend a lot at BJ's. You're also gonna be receiving one and a half to 2% cash back on all non-BJ's transactions. 2% is pretty solid, one and a half is pretty average. And then of course your BJ's one and BJ's one plus card rewards are never going to expire. That's pretty beneficial as well. And then finally, you don't have to pay an annual fee. So that's the last pro of both of these credit cards. Now, as far as the drawbacks go, the biggest drawback, once again, in my opinion at least, is the fact that you do not have the ability to earn a spin bonus. Like I said, it would be great if you could at least earn like $100, maybe 150, 
if you spent like $1,000 within the first few months of having this credit card. Right now, they do not offer a spend bonus. They also don't offer like a promotional APR for purchases, nor do they offer a promotional introductory APR for balance transfers. That's a pretty big drawback as well. And lastly, the only way that you can redeem your cash back on this card is at BJ's. They don't give you the ability to get like cash back, a check in the mail, use it on travel, gift cards, or anything else. You can only redeem them at BJ's, which sure you can spend it on like gift cards at BJ's, but you don't have a lot of flexibility as redeeming your rewards go. So that is the last drawback, at least in my opinion. So just to sum things up here, all in all, if you spend a lot of money at BJ's, getting the three to 5% cash back could really be worth it, plus the 10 to 15 cents off per gallon at gas. But if you really don't go to BJ's all that often, then in that case, you're probably going to be better off going with another credit card, one that actually offers a pretty good spend bonus of at least $200 and also offers you more flexibility in, in, re in regards to like redeeming your uh, cash back or points go. But that's all I have for today's review. I certainly hope that you enjoyed and found value out of it. If you did, again, I would greatly appreciate it if you could give this video a like. Consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already and I will see you in the next video.